Good afternoon, everybody. It is Fantastic Friday, and we all know what that means. We didn't do it last week because we did the super fun Christmas Eve live stream. And so Mike and I are back at it. Michael from One Rental at a Time. How's it going, my friend? Great, man. Uh, for us, we're recording this on the last day of 2021. It's been an amazing year. Uh, I want to thank you for letting me be a part of your channel. And of course, thank you for being a huge part of my channel and, and uh, helping so many people. Your, your house hacking, 4321, all of that stuff is... Um, it's changing lives. I don't know if you can see it, but I, I can see it in, in, in my community. So thank you. Yeah, um, I'm sadly created too much competition in my own area for it. Uh, I actually talked to the, uh, I talked to my broker this morning. I talked to my broker this morning and I said, hey, I said, am I missing something? I, I, I'm not seeing any active listings in the three towns that I get this is <laughs> And he texted back and he, or he called me back and he, or we were on the phone. So he, he answered back. He goes, uh, zero inventory. No, it's zero. 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 We have zero, two, three, four units on the market right now in my region. Zero. Wow. Zero. None. Nada. Zippo. Zilch. Nothing. So yay me. Four, three, yeah. two, one. Yeah. You should do that in my region. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you where I fish again and invite more fishermen to yeah, my exactly. small was, little lake. It was already skinny. Now yeah. it's non-existent. Yeah, so right. yeah, so that was fun. But you know, because it's the last day of the year, because I know that you'll roll this on your channel tomorrow and we want to we'll yep. put this out on Lumberjack Landlord uh, today yep. is really wanted to talk about, you know, I think that you and I have done a great job in our careers of sure. looking at what went well and looking at what didn't go well. Yeah. Right? And then pivoting, making adjustments. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's that in-game adjustment. And sometimes it's, you have to really see 12 months of data to really see the trend. Yeah. And so, you know, based on that, the, the first thing that I wanted to cover with you is kind of the top three things that you uh, learned in 2021 that maybe, you know, changed your mindset, maybe mm -hmm. changed uh, how you looked at the market, maybe, you know, what, what are some of those, what are those kind of top three things that you look at 21 and really kind of take away from 21 as a real estate investor? Uh, there's so the first one for me is frankly the importance of house hacking, right? Admittedly, it's not something I've done, mm -hmm. but now that I've dug into it, it's amazing how house hacking or what I think needs to be rebranded, <coughs> excuse me, cheat code to wealth, yep. how important it's been. And again, Anna Kelly, uh, a, an expert on my channel, sells the big house in Texas, <coughs> buys a fourplex in Pennsylvania. She does it before it's really a thing, right? She does this. 15 years ago or so and uh we've talked about it off camera and it's like she would not be where she is today without has uh to see students pick up on your four three two one to talk to todd baldwin who's on cnbc millennial this and, and he, he's really well known all house hacking he does roommates even yeah uh spencer cornelia yeah. a guy in vegas who i've interviewed uh house hacking uh i think i i missed the importance uh next i my hope is Gen Z and millennials really pick up on it because I think the whole baby boomer Gen X buy the you know your starter home and then you trade up when you can and all of that. I think there's just a new and better way to do it, and I think it's house hacking. Whether you're doing a fourplex or you're buying a big home like uh, uh, Spencer does, uh, I think house hacking is the cheat code to wealth. I think house hacking, I think house hacking is the only way I could confidently tell a 20 year old you could be a millionaire at 30, and it is the four three two one. Yep. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more excited today about the possibilities of what house hacking could give to the next generation than I was last year. And last year, I didn't even know about it, right? Well, you and I didn't really start talking. I think we did our first interview the 27th of December. That was the introduction. Yeah. But then we had another year of just, I'm like, God damn, this house hacking thing is freaking real. And then Todd Baldwin and then Spencer and all these other people that are in my world. Yeah. Yeah. Dion. Anna, I'm Dion. And I'm, yeah. geez, I'm like, you don't have to hit me with a stick seven times to realize that uh, house hacking is a thing and more people should, more people should talk about it and do it. So um, that was, that was number one for me. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, you know, the, the, the biggest takeaway for me for 21 was people don't have crystal balls. Oh, they don't have crystal balls. <laughs> they are just so colossally, colossally full of, narratives and narratives yeah. they create and often their narratives are very narrow in scope and so my biggest takeaway from 21 is something that you've really coined the phrase of doing the work and it's doing yeah. the work myself for myself 
right? Mm -hmm. Doing the work myself for myself. And it's because I can't, I can watch you and Dion and Anna and, you know, all of the experts that you have and bring to the table. Then on top of that, I watch a bunch outside of that, Mm -hmm. you know, the Mark Kohlers and the Grant Cardones and the full scheme of things, right? The Pace Morbies. Yeah. Watching all of these different guys and recognizing that in order to become elite, I have to get good at all of these different things. But really it's understanding that no one's going to do that for me. I have to do it for myself. And it's not only going to be an investment of the most valuable thing I have, which is time. Yeah. You but can't get it back. It's also going to be an investment of money, right? It's going yeah. to have to be an investment. And so, you know, that really, that one takeaway for me is, is really making sure that you're doing the work mm-hmm. um, for yourself and getting better at what we're doing. And if you really, truly want to change, you have to do something differently this year than you did last year. Yeah. That's a big deal for me. That last piece is, is it's, I don't really like calendar year things, right? Me because what's magic about January one that December 31st, but Hey, we're here. So we might as well throw it out there. Right. Yep. Um, if you want next year to be different than this year, what are you going to do different? Cause if you do the same stuff, you're going to get the same stuff or worse. So that's a big thing for me as well. So I like that one. Yeah. So what's your number two? Number two is um, I think this pandemic, this health crisis, whatever you want to call it has accelerated movement. Yep. I think what we are seeing is, I think California, for example, is declining. I think we are both seeing exit net migration, but more problematic is the next generation's not coming, or at least not coming with the same veracity. They're going to Texas or Nashville or Miami or uh, else Arizona, Vegas, whatever. That is going to be a slow leak in our balloon. California is too expensive, the highest taxes, crime, dirtiness. It, it's all, it's, it's bad. And it's getting worse. And I would love to blame Gavin Newsom for all of that. He's only one of the problems. There's lots of problems throughout the political landscape in California. And we're going to be paying the price probably for the next several years. And you won't feel it this year. You won't feel it next year. You won't feel it the year after. But eventually the termites will eat the foundation and California will will step backwards. And again, it's not that people are leaving that bothers me. Because if you leave for a choice and you sell your big home, somebody else picks it up, right? Mm-hmm. It's the generation that we're missing. Yes. That is what's always made California special. You yeah. get the master's degree, the computer science, all these people. It's the next Facebook, the next Google, the next, the next, the next. Those are going to be born in Austin. They're going to be right. born in Miami. That's right. And that's a problem. We lose that generation problem. In addition to that, we've seen movement from apartments to houses, yes. right? This health crisis has proven that space is good. Maybe I can get away with a two bedroom, but now I need three because I need my office, my gym, my my kids' classroom, whatever it is. Uh, people are going bigger. Uh, the house, the backyard has never been more valuable, right? For the longest time in my career, I've talked about bedrooms, bath, and parking. This was the first year I added, do you have a fenced backyard? Mm-hmm. A fenced backyard was getting me an extra hundred bucks. It got me nothing before, maybe right. 25 bucks. It didn't matter, right? It wasn't a thing. But now, damn it, I got my kids at home and I got to, you know, I got to get them outside while I'm on a work call and all of those things. So um, there's been a big demographic shift location wise. And again, I'm in California, but again, Fresno's benefited, right? It's off the coast, it's cheaper. So it's had net migration up versus, you know, San Francisco and LA down. So uh, I think, I think, I think we've seen a movement. I think it's broken. I don't think this is a one hit wonder. Uh, I do think the next technological revolution will come out of another state, probably Texas, probably Austin, if I had to guess, but it could be Nashville. It could be Miami. That's, that's the beauty of these startups. You just don't know where they're going to blossom, but it's probably not going to be the Bay. And uh, that will be a problem that we pay for, for years to come. I think. I think it's going to be Austin or Tennessee um, because I think Miami is limited on real estate. I think that that's going to be the cap because now it's getting super crazy expensive to be there and they're on the ocean. There's nowhere else to go, but and that's, I think going to be the limitation because Tennessee and and, and like the Nashville area, flat, expansive, like, yeah. Oh, we just add another ring. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And Austin, much the same. Austin really much the same there too. So I I can see that. So the, the, the second one for me is um, what I will, what I believe will be a much bigger play in the future is that Mm. geography matters much less. Oh, totally agree. Geography matters much less. And the reason I believe that is not only now with the work from home thing, 
which is absolutely going to become much more of a thing. But now companies with how hard they're having to fight, not only wages wise, but culture wise to hang yeah. on to people. Yeah. Okay, fine. Work from home. And just once a week, we'll have a regional office. And if they find a talent pool, like an Austin or a, you know, tenant, you know, a, um, a, yeah, a, a there'll be whole divisions Tennessee. and teams. Right. And they're going to exactly at that point, then they'll say, Hey, you don't have to move in for good, but yeah. you can come in once a week, once a month. So, yeah. you know, you can meet other people. Type yeah. Of. These satellite offices or, yes. or our, um, what was that company that went bust? We work, we work. Yeah. Now we work. Like if you launch the WeWork now, it, it actually might make more sense, yeah. right? It could work because that's what I think is going to happen as well, right? They, they're going to get to a point where, hey, we've got, I don't know, pick a number, 30 people in yep. City X. Yep. Like, you know what? Let's create a little team. And you know what? We'll do a WeWork facility. We'll rent three rooms. We'll, we'll set it up with our stuff, our low. It's, yeah, I think, I think you're right. Nailed it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think that's another piece too, uh, for sure. I mean, just... <laughs> Just in what I'm saying. And I think that what's really interesting is I think that makes a bigger play into metaverse. I think as people are doing a lot more with, you know, VR goggles and those are the way that you're actually doing, you know, that's going to Do be you have them yet? Do you have VR goggles? I will not. No, uh, not anytime soon. That's a Dion thing. He has every VR goggle set there is out there. Yeah. I have to ask him about that. We'll do that yeah. next time. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, I mean, that's nowhere on my wish list. That's it's been a big time gamer world. It's going to become the michael douglas the movie disclosure thing where yeah. people are having meetings and walking into virtual buildings and that's going to be a thing and so 10 years from now guess how much less it matters that you're around the epicenter of san francisco less yeah that's very that's, much, yeah. Less. much less much less, much less. and yeah. that i think hurts values longer term all right number three from you sir uh number three for me is really the value of having relationships with non-qm lenders right i came into the year uh with some free and clear assets that I did on purpose, right? Uh, I rates went down for everybody but me, right? I was like, I can't get these rates in the twos and the threes and all of that stuff. Uh, but found a non-QM lender that would not only give me rates in the high threes, let's just call it, let's round it to four, uh, which again, for me is, you know, points lower than I normally can get. And uh, third, the big thing was 30 year money. Then again, he provides blanket loans, portfolio loans. Uh, you know, you can do lend to a new LLC, uh, non-QM lenders, they were always on the radar for me, Yeah, right? But I could get private money, right? So I started hard money, like 12, 12 points. Then I got good at what I did and got private money. And then non-QM, right? Which a market really didn't exist. I guess it was there, but I didn't know about it. But so now they have- their, So speaking yeah. to your credit, like a couple of years ago, that was like pretty much non-existent. Nothing. But now they have public companies. They got right. their own big pile. They're doing their own- um, Right. They're creating loans and selling them. It's, it's just a thing. Right. Yeah. So the fact that they're out there and they can serve a huge need um, and the fact they helped me. Right. I, I took dead money. I had an office building that I, I'm like, I'm not I would not have gotten I, I don't know, let's say 100 grand. Let's just make up a number. I would not have taken that 100 grand if I didn't have 30 year fixed rate money. Correct. I just wouldn't because I'm so afraid of what 2026 is. Why is 2026 important? Because most commercial loans are five year arms. Right, twenty-five year AM, five year arms. You have a five, four, three, two, one paydown. And I'm like, I'm not refining in 2025, and I'm not selling the building because I want to own it the rest of my life. And then they go and whisper in my ear, "What would you like? Some thirty year money? How about it? Four percent? Yeah, I'd like some of that because, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I. How much of that can I have exactly? Exactly. So yeah, yeah, I'll take all of it. Right. So, um, yeah, uh, coming into the year wasn't on my radar. I was, I was happy, but annoyed, right? You're, I don't know about everybody. I, I was happy. I had some free and clear stuff, but I was annoyed that I could, that's dead money, right? Just right. dead money sitting there. And I still got stuff to buy. So um, I was very happy that I found that frankly. Yeah, that's huge. I think my third one is it's never become more apparent that network is your net worth. It's never become more apparent. I mean, think about, I think about literally December, December 18th of 2020. Okay. I didn't know you. Nope. I didn't know Dion. Uh, didn't know Brian Casella. Didn't know Spencer Cornelia. Didn't know any of these guys. None of wow. you guys. And on, on, the, on the personal private side, I didn't know three of the contracting companies I've given six figures worth of business to. That's awesome. 
I didn't know three of the brokers I've done business with. In fact, one of the brokers, I actually said to him, I said, I overpaid on this deal just so you and I could start talking because you ignored my previous three deals. <laughs> you, you did a deal with somebody I am else. paying. <laughs> yeah, I am paying to get to know you. Thanks. So you can, you're welcome. You're um, welcome. Enjoy yeah. it. And then, and, uh, and that his, that gave me my first two real wholesale deals, real oh, nice. wholesale deals. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and my first, you know, million dollar purchase, all of this came from network. That's, that's it so all awesome. came from network. So I think that, I think that people really don't understand and they really don't truly believe in the power. Cause if you understood and saw the power of network, oh, you, you would do never it. Stop. You, you would never stop. Never stop. I hope you people would, hear that. I doing mean, one or two a week. What are you kidding me? You do one a day. Yeah, you really could. You really you could. You All you got to do is ask for referrals. People have, you call me, right? You want to know somebody in Fresno, then you ask them who they know. And yeah, 100%. you know, getting, growing your network should never stop. It really annoys me when people say, I got the guy, the yeah. girl, the this, the, no, you don't. You may have one that's your favorite. Cool. Yep. But go have 1700 of them. What, what's stopping you? You just, and then, oh, by the way, tell everybody what your buy box is. Cause you never know. You had a tenant's boyfriend bring yes. you a deal because yes. they knew what you looked for. Yes. How cool is that? Yep. And it led to a second deal. Oh, Jesus. Come on. And the crazy thing is, is that not only did that lead to a second deal, but then because one of my, uh, one of my inspectors was busy. I got a referral to another inspection company. They did two inspections for me. The third inspection, the guy said, hey, love working with you so much. He's like, you just have a great approach. Love working with you. I've got a deal that I just heard about that I know the bank is going to be bringing to market. You can probably intercept it. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. I'll, yeah. So, at least yes. I'll make the phone call, right? I'll ha let's have a conversation about that. That's Wor worst case. I say no. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the other thing too, is that that's what we talk about, or that's what I talk about. And you and I kind of discussed kind of becoming elite. Yeah. It's not only being able to walk it and know what it costs. It's being able to actually get any deal done. But then the third thing is really being able to look across the board and say, I've done MLS deals. I've done sub two deals. I've done private, private equity deals. I've done, you know, um, uh, pri privatized mortgage deals. I've done non-QM. I've done, and when you look at the portfolio at the end of the year and you say, these are seven lines of business that I yeah. had done two in the previous year. Yeah. Like Pretty that cool. gets you elite. And then all of a sudden you have that many more deals you're able to look at, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's great. So Mike, any other thoughts before we leave 21 in the rear view? No, the other, just the last thing on 2021 is, is, is again, uh, I'm more convinced than ever that it all starts with this. Yeah. That's right. Don't overcomplicate it. Just do the work, get, get a little bit better every day. And uh, I want to thank you for being such a big part of one rental at a time. So thanks again. Uh, happy to, uh, where can we find you, Mike? Because they got to, people got to see this stuff so they can get this beaten into their head. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of repetitive sometimes. Uh, one rental at a time, get you a website, Instagram, uh, YouTube channel books, uh, just good stuff. Yeah. Live streams on Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time, yep. 11 a.m. Eastern time, daily financial news. Honestly, when I don't, so if I don't have a meeting in the morning or if Ashley has the kids or whatever, and I'll usually have CNBC or something like that on the background. If I can't catch that, I'll literally just watch yours. And it's like That's 15 awesome. minutes on in the background gives me the cliff notes. And it's like, and then if there's something adjusting, I can keep an eye on it the rest of the day. That's so, awesome. Huge help. So Lumberjack cool. Landlord on YouTube, Lumberjack Landlord and Mrs. Lumberjack Landlord on Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Last night was a lot of fun. Four um, hours. You know, four, yeah, we went like four hours. It was a lot of fun. We just kept on going until the question stopped. And Ashley, I, Ashley was kicking me under the desk going, I got to go to bed. <laughs> like, all right, sounds good, but I'll keep on going. But uh, yeah, that's every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then Sundays, 1130 a.m. Eastern time. We go for three hours then too. Mike, it's been an awesome, fun year having you a part of it. Been great to be a part of your channel. So much fun. It's awesome being able to help folks. And uh, and yeah, we'll hit things up in segment number two. What are our top outlooks for 22? Mm, All right. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Good. Mm -hmm.